Happy Feast of the Annunciation. I just want to send a special message to our Chesterton of the Twin Cities seniors today. Uh, greetings to everyone else as well, but today was a day that the seniors and I were going to treasure together for the rest of our lives. We were supposed to be at the Basilica of the Annunciation in Nazareth celebrating Mass on this day, the Solemnity of the Annunciation. So I know it's a little bit of a heartbreak, the whole trip, of course, the whole pilgrimage to the Holy Land, uh, but today was going to be that day that always, every year on the Annunciation, we'd remember, I was there. Uh, and where were you? Well, how many times did I ask you in Rome if you knew Latin? So I hope you're not just goofing off and studying a little bit of Latin, but there's a Latin word that gets inserted in all the Latin inscriptions around the Holy Land. They'll have a scriptural passage uh, that, that says this is what happened here, but then they'll add a word in it. And the word they add is hic, here. It happened here. So for the uh, Annunciation, it's, and the word was made flesh here and dwelt among us. Hic. So uh, one of, some of my pilgrims from earlier pilgrimages to the Holy Land got so uh, tired of me saying the word hic that they actually made for me a little heek that I could always have with me to remind me. But what does heek remind us of? It reminds us that there is a historicity to the gospel. That is, this isn't a fairy tale. It really happened. And we can go to the places where it happened. And that's, of course, what my great hope had been for our pilgrimage to the Holy Land, is that you would develop a profound love for the scriptures, but by reading them in situ, that's Latin as well, for on site, right? In the proper context, physically, that they happened, it would burn a memory into your mind and you would be able to connect with our Lord in a deeper way. And so uh, I'm hoping some point in the future we'll do an alumni pilgrimage and we'll make it happen. But in the meantime, I just want to share with you this reflection on the Annunciation uh, and the historicity of the Gospels. And to know that just as God really was working within the lives of people 2,000 years ago, He's still working in our lives today. And that's what I want you to know. Uh, I miss all of you, and I, I know that, that uh, it's a difficult time for you. You're at home. Uh, you probably have some of those little brothers and sisters that you were happy to escape off to high school uh, during the day to, to not have them underfoot. Uh, be kind, be gentle, be patient, be understanding. I know maybe mom and dad are stressed out about this whole situation as we all are, so maybe they're being a little bit more nagging. And of course, maybe you're kind of a little bit not quite getting into the groove of routine uh, yet and, and ordering your days properly and just kind of kind of going through the day. And so maybe mom and dad are nagging more than usual. Be patient, be kind, be understanding. Set a good example for your younger siblings. Be helpful to mom and dad in this situation. Uh, I, I love you. I think you're all great. I know you're capable of being God's blessing to your family. Uh, that's why as we remember the Annunciation, we remember that life is sacred from the moment of conception. That's something that we can think about too with regard to this current crisis in our country uh, is that we can value life that we can realize that, that this great gift of our lives is meant to be God's gift to the world. It's not just a gift to me to enjoy my life. My life is a gift to those around me, especially starting within that circle of the family. So think about now, not how we're just all in close quarters and getting fed up with each other. Think about how can I be God's blessing to these people right here, right now. Uh, hic et nunc, here and now. Uh, so, so think about that as well. And I just want to share a story uh, with you uh, about my own life and my own relationship with the Blessed Virgin Mary, uh, because even the, though the day is the Annunciation of the Lord, it's very much a day associated with Our Lady. It's Our Lady's act of faith that opens the gates uh, for God's plan of salvation. Uh, God could have done this without her, but He chose to come to us through Mary and so as St. Louis de Montfort reminds us, especially for those of you that were preparing to do your Marian consecration today in Nazareth, still do that and know uh, that, that the Blessed Mother hears you and, and loves you. 
But uh, St. Louis de Montfort reminds us that as God chose to come through Mary to us, so we can go to God through Mary, ask her that first and perfect disciple to help you to be the best disciple that you can be. But when I was a little bit younger than you, uh, early teens, uh, my grandmother, who had been a very, very pious I Irish Catholic, daily mass, daily rosary and all that, and that wasn't kind of the family that I had grown up in, but grandma used to come and stay with us for a few months at a time uh, because she was a widow. She would visit her, her kids in that way. It was beautiful. But at a certain point, grandma had died uh, and her mail was still coming to us. And so I saw uh, this, this letter uh, from this shrine. And so I, I opened up the shrine letter. And of course, what it was? It was a begging letter. It was a letter asking for money. Uh, get ready, because as you become adults, you get lots of those types of letters from every Catholic organization, every other charitable organization out there. But I was just touched by this because I thought my grandmother, who had nothing, used to sacrifice and send a little bit of money to this Marian shrine. So I want to do that too. So even though I was at this point uh, not old enough to have really had a, a job, uh, but I had some allowance money and some chore money and whatever, uh, that people had given me gifts for birthdays, whatever. And I, I took some of that and I mailed off a donation to that shrine. Well, many, 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 many years later, uh, I was actually visiting the area where that shrine is. And so I decided, well, you know what? I'm going to make a special trip over there and go to that shrine and uh, pray for my grandmother there. And, and so I called and asked if I could celebrate Mass. And they said, oh, of course. And so I went and celebrated Mass. And most of it is an outside shrine and, and all. And so I was thinking to myself, you know, it'd be nice if there was a beautiful picture of Our Lady here. Uh, and it's uh, the shrine of Our Lady of the Snows, uh, which is just across the river from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, and so I thought, well, what would Our Lady of the Snows look like? And I, all of a sudden, the light bulb went off. And you might remember, uh, for those of you seniors that, that were with me in Rome last year on pilgrimage, when we went to St. Mary Major, I showed you the altar, uh, the, the chapel of Our Lady under her title, Salus Populi Romani, Our Lady Health of the Roman People, Health or Salvation, depending on, on your, your Latin uh, translation. But, but there is where I had celebrated my first Mass because I was ordained in Rome. I did my seminary training in Rome, ordained there, celebrated Mass there. Well, there, uh, that beautiful icon is an image that tradition says that St. Luke had painted. And it's the very image that Pope St. Gregory the Great, uh, around the year 600, just before that, uh, processed through the streets of Rome when there was a plague. And it was that image that the Pope was carrying by the Tiber River when he saw the Archangel Michael appear above the castle sheathing his sword and saying the plague is over, right? And so that is the image that the Roman people have always gone to in times of difficulty. It's the image that Pope Francis uh, has, has prayed to on countless times. It's the image that I have a copy of that I've now placed in the sanctuary here at Holy Family. Uh, we processed around our, our, our school and church uh, a week or so ago before everything kind of went on shutdown asking for protection uh, from the pandemic. And so it's that image that, that I celebrated Mass uh, before for the first time. And as I was thinking about Our Lady of the Snows, all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, Our Lady of the Snows is Salus Popli Romani. Because the story is that it was a Roman senator that had a dream that Our Lady wanted a church built to him, St. Mary Major, right? And that, that when on the 5th of August, which is not a cool day in Rome ever, uh, he got up and he saw a miraculous snowfall just on one part uh, of the city, and it was in the outline of the church that he was to build. Uh, and so Our Lady of the Snows is Salus Popli Romani. Uh, and so I realized that in God's providence, that when I, as a teenager, had made a little sacrifice to send to Our Lady of the Snows, that it was... Our Lady the Snows would smile upon me and say, and you're going to celebrate your first Mass at my altar. Uh, that, that that's where I could offer the first time the sacrifice of the Mass. 
And it's just, you know, sometimes it's years later that you all of a sudden see how these dots connect to one another. So I just want you to think about that, especially because today uh, on the Solemnity of the Annunciation, it's Mary's act of faith. She says, fiat, you know, let it be done to me according to thy word. She said yes to God's plan for her life. And it's that yes that put everything in motion. And I know you all are discerning what is God's plan for my life. So say yes, even though you don't understand all of it, and be generous in every moment, and know that God is going to weave all of these things together in a marvelous way. And, and I, I want you to know that and to live in hope. There's a lot of fear around us right now. I want you to live in hope for the beautiful plan God has for your lives. Stay close to Him in prayer. Uh, there's not that structure to make you pray every day right now. Stay close to the Lord because you want to be close to the Lord, not because you have to. Pray your rosary, especially today, even though it's a Wednesday. Pray the, the uh, joyful mysteries today so you get the Annunciation, the first mystery, right? And, and stay close to Our Lady. Let her be a mother to you. Uh, and just let your heart be formed by her in that growing faith. Uh, no, I love you all. I'm praying for all of you. I can't wait uh, to connect with all of you and to hear how you've been using this time. And uh, we'll have a celebration at some point, I promise you. Here in the background is a painting that another pilgrim from a Holy Land pilgrimage gave to me. It shows the Sea of Galilee. And you see here, heek, here, here, reminding us this really happened. You see there a boat on the, the Sea of Galilee, and you see there the, the sun and the horizon forming the cross, reminding us of the Lord's sacrifice. And there is a dove reminding us of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's always in the background, moving in gentle ways. So be attentive to the Holy Spirit. Say yes to God's plan. Know the Blessed Virgin is helping you every step of the way. And let's keep praying for one another. God bless you.